I've been on the kind of dry zone. All the rains go, have been going around me and around me, but we got two inches today, so we're very blessed. Okay, praise God, praise God. And we were praying for you uh, last week uh, that the hurricane would not trouble you all. So it uh, looks like you made it through all that. Yeah, I was I was way away from it, so we didn't get any rain at all out of it last time. Okay. But you okay. know, Hartford, Texas, did get hit pretty hard. All right. So we still need to pray for those folks there yes. and in Louisiana. Yes, ma'am. We will continue to do that. Yes. All righty. Um, okay, Dr. Jean Bratton is with us. She's in Wilmington, Delaware, actually Mayor of Delaware. And um, we'd like to ask Dr. Jean to come on and say hello to us and then lead us in prayer. And then we'll get started with Hello, everybody. Up. Hey, hello. Dr. <laughs> How's everyone? You just let me know when you're ready and I'll do the prayer, Dr. Okay. Porter. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, I'm ready with uh, congratulations again to Pastors Larry and Lisa Johnson, 46 years. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. Wow. Praise God. And um, that brother, he really needs to buy her a large medal or, or a new car or something, man. She done put up with him for 46 years. Glory yeah, I know that. Glory to God. Larry, I'll talk to you uh, maybe tomorrow and tell you what uh, I really think, you know. <laughs> no, I'm not going here. God bless you. I love you all. Come on, Dr. Jean, on the serious side. Okay. <laughs> all right. Father God, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just... Thank you for this sacred assembly because where your people are gathered together, we know the meeting is blessed. Father, we just ask that you bless everyone who took out the time to join this Bible study this evening. And Father God, we ask that you bless Dr. Carter and his wife Jackie as they facilitate the meeting, Father God. Provide them with every need, Father God, that is required to roll out this semester financially, emotionally, whatever it is, Father, you know what they need. And Father, we just ask, we just ask that you add on to the student body, Father, increasingly. Father, that let this be a, a time of multiplication because times now and end times are near and everyone needs to be awakening to your will and your way. And we thank you and we lift this prayer to you in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Bratton. And uh, thank you, everybody. And uh, Jackie, you ready to roll? Minister Loretta. Minister L Loretta, we yes, welcome you. Praise God. God bless you. Praise God. God bless you, Pastor Carter. Thank you. Thank you. And Minister Loretta's on, ladies and gentlemen. She is what a blessing. She is. Um, uh, we just published. I just, I just published a new book. I'm releasing a new book this week, ladies and gentlemen. My Yay. Christian Manifesto. My Christian Manifesto, and it's it's all about uh, my walk with the Lord and the things I'm declaring and the things yes. I'm declaring against. And this. Christian Manifesto. We want you to get your copy. Go to Amazon, get a copy of my Christian Manifesto for only fourteen ninety five. And in this Christian Manifesto, we're making, we're taking a stand. We're not going to be like a lot of these so-called Christians across the nation, full of hatred and pointing fingers and the name game and blaming. No, in this manifesto we're taking a stand we're taking a stand against hatred against violence against racism against lying and deception and we want you to get a copy and um minister loretta jackson and i have uh entered into a, a partnership where she has designed blankets wall posters plaques coffee cups pens um, mouse pads and a whole lot of other things um, 
from the design that we created for to go along with this book, My Christian Manifesto. Even T-shirts, ladies and gentlemen, T-shirts with the manifesto on the T-shirts so that we can spread the word, that we can awaken Christians up to the fact that we're, we're more than nominal Christians. We've got to take a stand. We stand against hatred. We stand against racism. We stand against anything that's not godly. And we're not just going to talk the talk, but walk the walk. So go to Amazon.com. Well, go to my website and click on uh, the icon at the top left of any page, and you can order your book, My Christian Manifesto. Then um, we, it also, when, once you get your book, you can also order. It shows you how to order from Loretta Jackson, the, one of the many, several, uh, a plethora of the many things she has created from this manifesto. Okay, enough commercializing. Let's get into <laughs> some words. Job chapter 1, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. He hated evil. Job hated evil, ladies and gentlemen, and we ought to be like Job. Listen, this is not a fictitious person. This is not a parable. This is a real person in the land of Uz, and it's believed. Uh, let me give you a description of where Uz was. Oh, Carter, Pastor Carter, you're kind of poetic tonight. Where Uz was. Okay, uh, Uz was somewhere outside of Egypt, and we believe that this particular story took place before the Exodus. Before the Exodus, the biblical experts agree that uh, this man lived in an, in an area uh, near Chaldea and um, near where Abraham was from, and it is also believed that Job was the son of Issachar. So he was Abraham's grandson and one of uh, Jacob's sons. Um, okay, so one of, one, of, one, of, um, one of Jacob's sons and the um, son of Issachar. And so you'll find Job under the name of Jasub. Jashub, J-A-S-H-U-B, in 1 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1. 1 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1. You'll see Job's name under uh, the name of Jashub. And we believe that this is the man who went through all this that we see in the book of Job. Now, if any of you have problems, I mean, who doesn't have problems? But if you really think, you really think you've got some problems, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, Pastor Larry Johnson, man, he's just he's just enjoying celebrating his 46th anniversary, and he says, no problem, no problem. I can see Pastor Larry Johnson there. No problem, Pastor Carter. No problem. But for any of you who think you have problems. Read the book of Job. I mean, if you've got somebody in your life who's a, who's a problem-oriented uh, person, someone, uh, uh, anybody who's waddling in self-pity, anybody who needs a wake-up call, I mean, if you've got somebody in your life and they're always talking problems, always talking gloom and doom and negativity, get them to read the book of Job. And if they won't read it, then make the make a a, a, a cassette, make a, a cassette, make a, a recording and send the recorder. Read it for them or send them a recording of Job. They need to read the book of Job. I mean, once you read the book of Job, you won't want to complain anymore. I'm going to repeat that. Once you read the book of Job, you will not need to complain anymore. By the way, his name is pronounced Job, or uh, in the Latin or Greek, it's Job, I-O-B in Greek, and uh, Eob in, in uh, Hebrew. And so we call him 
Job. And I, and I now, now listen, listen, ladies and gentlemen. There was a preacher one time. He stood up in the pulpit and said, "Today we're gonna. I'm preaching from the book of Job." And, and ladies and gentlemen, there is no book of Job. There's no book of Job. There's no. And, and, and I remember another time a preacher got up and said, "Today let's turn to the book of Titus." Titus. There is no Titus. There ain't no Titus in the book. Hey, Sandra. There, Sandra Inman. Hey, Karen. There is no book of Titus. It's Titus. And it's Job. Okay, so we're going to learn how to pronounce these things also. But look at Job. There were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 300 camels. 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went out and feasted in their houses every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. So his sons and daughters, they partied. They partied. They got down every day. They were partying. And it was so when the days of their feasting were going about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of of them all, for Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. So uh, based on that description, it is believed that Job lived before the Exodus, before God uh, gave the law to Moses and pronounced the law. So you don't have any real um, allusions here or references to the law of the law of the Israelites. And so we believe that Job was uh, Abraham's grandson uh, and, and uh, actually great-grandson, son of, um, one of, J son of Issachar, uh, one of the 12 um, tribe leaders of Israel, and a descendant of uh, Abraham. Now listen to this, verse 6. And we get, once you start reading Job, it's, so easy for us to forget that there's something going on in the heavenlies. And I want you, ladies and gentlemen, to relate this to your own life every day, no matter what you're going through. Um, remember, God's got the plan. God said in Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have for you. And those, these things that are happening to us, these challenges that we're experiencing, uh, these challenging your challenges you're seeing all across the nation and all across the world, God is in control. And it just might be that the thing you're going through now is because of a challenge that Satan has made to God. Now, listen, we get this from verse 6 of chapter 1. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And we see uh, in this first chapter that Satan comes back and forth into the presence of God. And so the sons of God, meaning the angels, uh, even the fallen angels, were given opportunity to present themselves before God. And so given this, verse 7 says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? The word escheweth meaning hateth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear thee for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Hast thou, thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. And so, so the sons of God, the angels appeared before God and, 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 were given their reports. 
And God asked Satan, Satan's boasting, bragging. He's been all over, all over the world. You don't have any left, Lord, who are faithful to you. God said, hey, have you uh, considered my servant Job? You know, Satan is a liar. And, 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 and he's the father of lies. And, and, and he has trouble with the truth. So he's saying, you, you, you don't have anybody who's perfect, Lord. Nobody who's upright. I, I've taken them all down. And God said, no, no, devil, the liar that you are. Have you considered my servant Job? Well, God, you know, you have a hedge of protection around him. You build a hedge of thorns around him. I mean, I can't touch Job. You've got him so protected. I mean, but if you take that hedge of protection from around him, he'll curse you like everybody else has done. He'll just curse you. Just take your hand, take your protection from him. And the Lord said unto Satan, verse 12, Behold, all that he hath, is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went from the presence of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, every one of us has problems. Sometimes it look like, looks like we go through seasons of problems, trials, and tribulations. And, and like Teddy Pendergrass sang years ago, the only Luck I have is bad luck. And and, and and seems like we go from bad luck, one thing, bad luck. Well, we don't believe in luck. We, we know that uh, from studying this book of Job, God knows what's going on. And, and there's a war going on, ladies and gentlemen. There's a war going on. It is a constant war. War. That is why we need to be dressed up in the full armor of God. We can't let our guard down any moment. Even when we go to sleep, we have to sleep with the confidence that God has us covered by the blood of Jesus. That is why I love Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, we can go to sleep knowing that God's got this. And Satan is so slick, he attacks you while you're asleep uh, with, with terror and and, and, and nightmares and, and, and fright and, and this sort of thing. And uh, a lot of times people will wake up in the cold sweats, uh, uh, heart palpitations and all that, can't get back to sleep. But don't you worry. You belong to Jesus. Now, I belong to Jesus, and God's got this. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Man, I feel like preaching tonight. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. God promised that, and he's promised us through his word. He says, yea, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Yea, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. So we learn so much as we study the book of Job. And Job's situation, I mean, this man went through. I mean, I should never, ever, ever grumble or complain again in this life after having read through Job several times and reading what this man had to go through. Okay, he had uh, seven sons and three daughters. He had all these sheep and oxen, and he was the perhaps the wealthiest man in the world. But then Satan challenged God. The battle was between Satan and God. And, and, and a lot of times in our situation, ladies and gentlemen, there's a war going on where Satan is challenging God about you and me. And you know what? God has the confidence in us that we're going to trust him uh, no matter what happens, no matter what we go through. Uh, today I was thinking about this song, and Pastor Lisa Johnson, this song goes way back. Dr. Gene Bratton, this song goes back to the time when, when we met. And, uh, and uh, this is, a uh, well, even before we met you all, because this is an old, old song, and it's older than you all. But the song was, I made a vow to the Lord. Oh, yes, I made a vow to the Lord. I promised him that I would serve him till I die. I made a vow to the Lord. I made a vow to the Lord. It's all about I made a vow to the Lord. A V-O-W. I made a promise 
to the Lord, just like 46 years ago. I made, I, uh, Larry Johnson made a promise to Lisa Johnson, and on this day, uh, 50 years ago on this day, I made a vow, a promise to a, a young lady that I would love her and, and, and be faithful to her till death do us part. And death parted us 21 years ago. God took her home to be with him 21 years ago. But we made vows and holy vows before the Lord. And we see Larry and Lisa Johnson, 46 years. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, give God a hand clap of praise right now for Larry and Lisa Johnson for keeping their vows and continuing to, to, to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. Now, back to Job. Job was just going through his daily routine. He knew his sons and daughters were sinners and that they were not uh, worshiping God the way they ought to, and they, they, they were having parties and this and that and, and, and breaking God's law. So what Job would do, and this is before we believe before the law of Moses, Job would make sacrifices for his sons and daughters just in case they were not right with the Lord. And, and uh, many of us, uh, our kids are grown, and, and, and uh, I've got great-grandchildren now. And um, so, so they're grown now, so what can I do? I pray for them. I pray for them. I can't live their lives. I can't make their decisions for them, but I pray for them. And you and I, we have the responsibility. We, we've had the responsibility to pray for our leaders, pray for our president, for, pray for our nation, pray for this election, pray for the nations of the world. We can't do much about changing things, but we can pray. We can trust God to hear our prayer. And he says he will answer our prayers because we are his children. He said, even said, in, uh, he told Jeremiah in the 33, verse 3, uh, call unto me and I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. By the way, if you're going through something and you don't know why this is happening to you, you know, it's like uh, Charlie Brown. Remember the coasters? Years ago? Uh, 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 Charlie Brown, he's a clown. And then in the song, why is everybody always picking on me? Why is everybody always picking on me? And, 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 and you, you, you and I, we've gone through these times with God. Well, God, why me? Why me, Lord? And, and uh, I know there are times we've been in God's face. Why me, Lord? I mean, I mean um, uh, uh, why does this happen to me? And, 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 and why you let this happen to me? And now that this coronavirus thing has affected so many people and changed our lifestyle and everything, people are asking, why, why, why? And, and to this day, as I tell Jackie, I tell Jackie over and over and over again, Jackie, I don't hear. I don't hear it. I don't hear the leaders. I don't hear the church leaders saying, we're in this situation because we have sinned against God. Where? Who? Am I the only one hearing this? Uh, and, 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 and I know I'm not, but we're wondering, when are people going to say, hey, 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 when this nation repents, when uh, uh, people repent, there's going to be ch a change in the atmosphere. There will be a shift in power. When people do the uh, Second Chronicles 7.14 thing, when we humble ourselves and pray and seek God, uh, uh, then he will hear from heaven, forgive our sin, and heal the land, not only America, but the nations. And so there's so much in uh, the book of Job. Our assignment for this week uh, is Job chapter 1 through 21. Now, I want to uh, encourage those of you who are studying for credit, I've received, many of you have received your homework assignments already, and um, one student has completed all of the homework assignments for this course already, and several have sent in several assignments, and uh, I want to make sure, just make sure that, that you're not just doing assignments for assignments, but read the assignments, read the word. 
read the word. There's no, no use in going through Job and doing 21 chapters tonight and uh, um, 21 more next week unless you read. Get the scripture. Get the word. See what the word of God is saying. Read the word first and then tackle your homework assignments. And so um, I want to just send up that red flag to let everybody know, hey, I'm going to be checking on you. I'm going to be checking on uh, many of you uh, this semester and, and in ensuing semesters to make sure you're reading the Word of God. I, don't, I, I might just come up with a set of many questions after you send in your homework to ascertain whether or not you've read your assignments. So read those assignments. And, um, and that goes for those of you in other countries also. We've got several students. Uh, you're doing well in, in, uh, in outside of America and in America. We want this school to be a school of integrity. We, we, we want you to be able to get the word of God and rightly discern it and then teach others because uh, the school of ministry is preparing people to take the world, to take to the world the word of God, to change the word of God. God to change not the word of God to change the world to change people's lives and we thank God now Job here's the situation without his knowing it he's been set up this is a setup and in many of your lives without you even knowing it you've been set up you may say well why is everything happening to me why is why the streak of bad luck what's going on and uh, and 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 uh, uh, some of you are doing the doing the Marvin Gaye. What's going on? What's happening? Well, God uh, allows you to be put to the test. God has confidence in you and me that the Holy Spirit in us is going to keep us. God has total confidence in the Holy Ghost who lives in us to keep us. No matter what we go through, I'm going to say that the third time, God has total confidence in the Holy Ghost who lives in every believer that no matter what challenge we face, what we go through, we can be declared winners, that we can have the victory. And so it is so important that we keep our eyes on Jesus, not on the coronavirus. Not on, on what this political party says, not on what that political party says, not on what that news network says, not on what that book says, but what the Word of God says. So as we walk together, ladies and gentlemen, through these difficult times, and as we see many of our friends coming under oppression, sickness, despair, uh, uh, meeting challenges, we, we, we need to emphasize with them, pray for them, and have the confidence that the God we serve is going to give people the victory. But it, it, it really uh, is important that we keep our eyes on Jesus. Don't let, the enemy, uh, don't let the enemy pull you off track. Don't let him divide. A lot of people in the church today are being divided by the enemy. Satan is dividing the church, and, and, and he's using politics to divide the church. You know, there are some Christians who hate other Christians today because some Christians choose to wear a mask during COVID-19. I particularly choose to wear a mask. And, and there are some believers now, they will condemn me for wearing a mask. Hey, look, I'm going to wear a mask. I don't care who you are. I don't want you coughing on me, and I don't want you breathing on me. And, and, and no matter how cool I think I am, I don't want to breathe on you or cough on you. It makes sense. But it doesn't make sense for Christians to be angry with one another, hate one another, and, and draw political lines. And, 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 or or uh, uh, someone is a registered Democrat, other, someone else is a registered Republican. So uh, because you're a Democrat, I hate you. Or because uh, you're a Republican, I hate you. That's stupid, ladies and gentlemen, because Satan is dividing the body of Christ. And we do not need to operate on stupid. 
the Bible says we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. But look at Job. Look at Job and see what God uh, did and see what Satan is doing to Job. Now, I'm not going to go through all of this, but uh, the day came when um, shortly after Satan left the presence of God, Job got sick. Um, in verses 15 through 19 of chapter 1, the Sabaeans came, and a lot of Job's servants were killed. Fire fell from heaven, burned up a lot of sheep, and the servants consumed everything, the donkeys and the camels. Verse 17, carried away the servants. They were killed. Verse 18, while he was yet speaking, there came another messenger saying, your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in your oldest son's house. And behold, a great wind came from the wilderness and blew, blew, the, blew the roof in on them. They're all dead. All of your kids are dead, Job. All ten of them died in, in one party. And the servant said, I, I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and tore his coat and shaved his head fell down upon the ground and worshipped. Ladies and gentlemen, he did not cave in. He did not give up. He fell down on the ground. He was in great grief, but he worshipped God. And he said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Job did not charge God foolishly in all that he said. Now, the words in verse 21, naked, shall, naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's Job speaking. That is not a... a uh, true to God. God does not take away. Satan took away from Job. So we want to correct Job in this because a lot of people uh, blame God for calamity. No, 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 no. You cannot blame God for calamity. Sin brings calamity, and God will permit sin. He will allow sin. But in this case, uh, uh, all this calamity that came upon Job, we've got to remind ourselves Satan challenged God about Job. Satan said, yeah, man, hey, man, look here, look here. You've got a hedge around him. I can't even touch him. I can't even put a pimple on his face. I can't even touch him. You, you got so much protection around him, but remove that protection. You remove, yeah, remove that protection and see, see what he'll do. He'll curse you and die, uh, just like everybody else. And God said, you have my permission to challenge Job, but don't take his life. Don't, do not take his life. And so we see Job losing his ten children and all that he has. I mean, and so here he is, the richest man in the world, and um, he's sitting out on the town dump, Gehenna, let's look at verse 7 of chapter 2, so Satan so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a pot's herd, a piece of clay, and to scrape himself withal, and he sat down among the ashes. Listen to this, verse 9. Job's sweet thing, his little lady, his bride of 46 years, uh, uh, Larry Johnson. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Now, we know this is not Pastor Lisa Johnson talking. This is Job's wife talking. Look at you. Look at you, she said. You're pathetic. I mean, she really, I mean, she probably really reamed in it. Look at you, man of God. You're so pathetic. You're pitiful. Look at you, sick. Uh, broke, busted, disgusted, you done lost everything, your kids are dead, you done lost, what, what about our empire, we're broke, 
the bank is foreclosing. We ain't got nothing. And look at you. You're just sitting out here, and, 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 and you got that dumb look on your face, and you're saying hallelujah anyhow. Never let your troubles get you down. When our troubles come our way, hold our head up high and say hallelujah. And then look at you. You're worshiping God through all this. His wife said, his wife, ladies and gentlemen, his sweet thing. Satan got into her. She said, you just need to curse God and die. Woo! Pastor Gene Bratt and Dr. Gene Bratt, what do you think about that? I think I'm speechless, but it happens. Um, when you're going through, everyone's looking at you, and, and they're wondering, why? how can you still believe God? How can you still have that kind of faith? You don't know if, and I'm going to say what Dr. Carter once wrote, you don't know if there's been a divine counsel concerning you. That might be the reason for your trial. Praise God. Pray. I wrote that somehow? I wrote that? Yes, you wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Dr. Bratton. Really, this is true. You don't know if there's been a divine counsel about you. I remember my first church. Man, I came out of seminary. I was on fire. Karen, I was on fire for Jesus. Came out of seminary, and um, we were moving to the parsonage. We left Philadelphia to, to go to Chester, Pennsylvania. We were not there for a whole week. And, 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 and uh, S Sister Rachel said to me, she said, uh, I don't think we ought to unpack our bags. I said, what, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? She said, no, I don't think we ought to unpack our bags. Um, these people are not going to receive you. Um, we need to just stay uh, unpacked and get ready to move somewhere else. I said, woman, you're crazy. You know what? They kicked me out of that church after a year. I mean, they never, I never had a honeymoon with that church. And it was just meanness, nastiness, meanness from the first day. And, and even to the point where uh, uh, one time God gave me a series of sermons on Revelation, preach about the end times. And, and, and then God said, I want you to preach about shacking up. Tell them that they're living in sin, and, and these uh, church leaders should not be living with other people's wives. And, and I, I preached all that God gave me. And they called me to a meeting and said, if you don't lighten up and soften up, we're going to get rid of you and kick you out of our parsonage, kick you out of church, because cause, cause, uh, uh, we think we're all right. We're, 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 you're just interfering. You're messing with our lives. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, at the end of the first year there, they had a meeting, a church meeting, and, and they uh, asked me to leave and told me to leave and, and, and got a court order for me to leave. And um, here I am with my, my, uh, my wife and three children, and uh, we had just been there for a year. And my son, Wes, Wes was in fifth grade. And Wes, Wes said to, to me, we were having a... Uh, Family council, he said, Dad, are we Christians? Are wow. we really? He said, Dad, are we, we really saved? I said, what do you mean, son? He said, Dad, if we're really saved, why do we have to live like this? And the ungodly seem to prevail. He was only fifth, a fifth grader. He said, we're trying to live holy and righteous and, 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 and they're ungodly. They're living together. They're shacking up. and they're, they're doing everything wrong. And we're the ones who suffer. And so um, not that I've suffered as much as Job, but we've had a lot of hard trials. And many of you have had a lot of hard trials. And as Dr. Gene said, Dr. Carter wrote in one of his books, um, um, there might have been a divine counsel called concerning you. And, and, and maybe that's why you're in the situation you're in. But also, I think Dr. Carter probably wrote in that same writing somewhere, but hold on. <laughs> Don't give up. Hold out. Hold on. A change is going to come. Uh, uh, joy is going to come in the morning. I, I know, I know, I know Dr. 
Dr. Bratton, I know I had to put a good good ending to that story, did I? Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. So the, the sons of God uh, came together again. The angels and the fallen angels all met in heaven to give their report. Report. And, and so uh, Satan boasted again, boasted again. You know, and um, well, after the second time, God gave God gave um, Satan permission to attack Job's body, but don't kill him. Okay, and so we we find that that situation climax with Job sitting out on Gehenna, pus running from his sores, and Karen is a nurse, and Jean's a nurse. And they know a lot about medical stuff, but when you got pus running out of sores on your body and the dogs licking your sores and 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 uh people coming around with masks on and gloves and sanitized uh suits and uniforms, you know you're in pretty bad shape. And so that's Job out on the town dump and his wife. I mean the one you expect to get the comfort, the solace from. The word of encouragement, uh, and, and 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 the one you know, hey baby, you got a good word for me, and she says, yeah, Nada, just curse God and die. Look at you, you are pathetic. I mean, that's the word. That that's enough to make a man want to jump off a cliff. Then after that, his three friends decide they're going to make a journey. They get together. We're going to make a trip. To see Job, we've heard about Job, and so Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the Namathite. In uh, Job chapter two, verse eleven, they decide the journey from afar, and they're going to go and find out what's happening with Job, and tell Job what he needs to do, and 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 and, and put a solution to this, his dilemma. Verse twelve, and when and um. They went there to mourn and to comfort him. And, um, and when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept. And they rent every one his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. When they saw Job, they could not believe what they saw. And, you know, we, we've seen sick people. We've seen, we've had uh, even people in our family, members who, you know, um, sickness will, will will cause them to deteriorate, eat them up, and um, and I, I went I went through that with my first wife, and um, she aged aged so quickly. Dr. Jean Bratton knew her, Lisa knew her, and to watch her age so quickly through that kidney uh, uh, deterioration and uh, the dialysis process. And I remember one time she was in the hospital, hospitalized, and I, I went to the hospital to bring her home, and she was in a wheelchair, and I was pushing the wheelchair um, to, her, to, her, to her front door. And, so, and somebody came up to me, hey, Pastor Carter, that's your mom? And that broke my heart, but it broke her heart even more. Hey, Pastor Carter, that's your mom? And so uh, we we have known people who sickness beat people to a frazzle. And Job Job was beaten up so badly he was almost unrecognizable. And we've known many people. You see them and you say, and and the worst thing you say is, "Dang girl, what happened to you?" Or, man, what happened to you? No, you try to comfort them. Say some good words. Say some con words. Build them up and build their faith up. Build their confidence up. But uh, well, this person, hey, Pascal, that's your mom? <laughs> no, man, it's my wife. Oh, duh. Well, anyhow, Job's friends came to comfort him, and they were not ready for what they saw. The sickness beat Job down. Job was a miserable sight. And um, and so the next several chapters of Job is all about Eliphaz and Eliphaz's take on why Job was in the situation he was in. And then Bildad had to give his take on it. And then Zophar gave his take. 
but they all three, all three as brilliant and as intelligent as they were and as religious and as theologically sound as they thought they were, they all missed the point. They all had their reasons why they think Job was in his condition. And most of them, they thought Job had committed some uh, secret sin and would not confess his sin. And as a result, he was in the place where he was. And you know, there are still people today who teach that madness. Uh, you're in the situation you're in because of sin. Listen, unless God gives that to you, I would not promote that. You know, God gave to me several times. He, he continues to give to me. This nation, the United States of America, is being judged right now. We're in the situation we're in because of sin. And, and COVID-19 is just the beginning. COVID-20, 21, 22, 23, the in-laws, COVID's in-laws, they're all coming. And until America repents, until people turn back to God, Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see over and over again more and more troubles, difficulties, and calamities. And, 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 and yet the church is still asleep. The church is like in a slumber. The church, the leaders of the church can't come to grips. They're like blinded. Satan has leaders' eyes blinded. And God is waiting for uh, uh, men and women to cry out to him in repentance. And we've got to cry out. Not only do I cry out for myself, ladies and gentlemen, but I've got to cry out for my family. I've got to cry out for the leaders. I've got to cry out for the church. I've got to cry out for the church leaders. I've got to cry out for the government. I've got to cry out for the uh, poor decisions made by government officials. Even I've got to cry out in my intercession uh, on behalf of those who have turned their hearts against God and asked God to have mercy on them. That's the role of an intercessor, ladies and gentlemen. That's what an intercessor does. And so Job did not have an intercessor, ladies and gentlemen. He was out there all by himself, and there's one scripture where Job says there is no no middleman, no 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 go between, no intercessor. He said, and he told Eliphaz and Bildad and Zophar, I don't have a, 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 an intercessor. There's nobody to mediate for me. And so, uh, all during this time, uh, the, during the time of their visit. By the way, they sat and watched Job when they first arrived. They were quiet. They were dumb. They could not speak to him for seven days. They just looked at him. Have you ever been around somebody who was sick or somebody who's been afflicted and, and it was so shocking that you were, you were speechless? Well, these men were speechless for seven days. It took seven days before they spoke anything about him. And then the things that came out of their mouths for the next couple uh, uh, weeks or days, whatever, were so far off base that God eventually intervened. But as we see Job through it all, he is faithful. He is, he is hanging in there, and he refuses to curse God. Um, it is said that Job actually did, made two mistakes. One, he claimed that the Lord had taken everything away from him. We saw this in verse 121. But the Lord did not take those things away from him, his children, <clears throat> his cattle, his sheep, his donkeys, his houses and all that. Um, Satan took that away. Then the next thing. Um, Job questions God. Job questions Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. He says, shall we not receive evil? And Job was like the many people in world history who think that evil comes because of sin. A sickness comes because of sin. Calamity, disease, and other evils come from sin. Yes, they often do. But we see in God's dealings with Egypt, with Pharaoh, 
God used calamities and uh, sicknesses and pestilences and plagues to break the spiritual strongholds that were in Egypt. The Egyptians worshipped everything from snakes to monuments. And God broke down every so-called God they had with plagues until Egypt finally yielded by way of their spokesperson, uh, uh, Pharaoh. And so we learn a lot about Job. And um, Job was doing all right, but the more he heard his friends try to justify what was going on in Job's life, and they were missing the point, then Job began uh, to sin with his mouth. And so I have a list of 74 charges against God that Job made. And um, I'm not going to give you all of them, but I'll give you some of them. I have a list based on um, starting with chapter 1, verse 22. Let's look at 122. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Okay? But as these men began to speak, Job began to speak foolish things. Well, we already said, he said, the Lord taketh away. But it wasn't God. It was Satan who, who did this. Then, uh, chapter 2, verse 10, what? Shall we not receive evil? Three, God had hedged in Job with calamity. That's what Job said. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me. The poison thereof drinks up my spirit. Chapter 6, verse 4. Um, then Job said, The terrors of God do set themselves in array against me. 7.14, he says, God scares me with dreams and terrifies me through visions, so that my soul chooses strangling and death rather than life. So you wonder how many times Job thought about suicide. 720, you have set me as a mark against you. 721, you do not pardon my transgressions. So he accused God, God of not pardoning his sins. 917, he breaks me with tempest. He multiplies my wounds without cause. He will not suffer me to take my breath. He fills me with bitterness. He's accusing God of all these things. He destroys the perfect with the wicked. He will laugh at the trial of the innocent. So the more Job suffers and the more he hears his friends try to justify what was going on in Job's life, Job speaks out, and he speaks things that were not so. Uh, 19, chapter 19, verse 9. Strip me of my glory, take my crown, destroy me on every side, remove my hope like a tree, kindled his wrath against me, counted me as one of his enemies. He even count, he charged God in one uh, situation. He counted me as one of his enemies. He has put my brethren far from me. He has estranged my acquaintances. He has taken away my judgment. He has vexed my soul. He has loosed my cord. 30 and 11. You've got to watch out. When God looses your cord, you're about gone. And when God looses your cord, chapter 30, verse 11. He has cast me into the mire. 30, 19. I cry to you, and you do not hear me. 30, 20. I stand up and you do not regard me. You are become cruel to me. 30, 21. You oppose me. And so these are, uh, there, I have a list of 74 statements that Job makes that are not true, where he accuses the Almighty. And as we go through Job, uh, by the time we get to chapter 21, and let's turn to Job 21. We finish with Job 21, and then we pick up next week. But Job answered and said, Hear diligently my speech, 
and let this be your consolations. Suffer me that I may speak. And after that, I have spoken, mock on. He told them, he, I, like the way, I like the way the King James Version says this. He says, suffer me that I may speak. And after that, I have spoken, mock on. So he tells his three friends, mock on. Okay, mock on. Just keep on mocking me. As for me, is my complaint to man? And if it were so, why should not my spirit be troubled? Mark me, and be astonished, and lay your hand upon your mouth. Even when I remember, I am afraid, and trembling taketh hold on my flesh. Wherefore do the wicked live, become old, yea, are mighty in power? Job asked this question, wherefore do the wicked live? They become old, yea, are mighty in power. Their seed is established in their sight with them and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear. Neither is the rod of God upon them. And he goes on and on. Okay? And he reaches a point where actually he tells them to, you know, don't say anything else to me. Okay, you've been mocking me. Everything you're saying, you're off base. And so uh, he even told them on one occasion, uh, why don't you leave and, and come back again at another time? So Job had had it with his so-called friends, the intellectuals, the religious community, the theologians, the pastors, the preachers, the teachers, the word men and women who had a word, I have a word for the Lord, yea, I say unto you, the prophets, the false prophets. Job had had it to the gills with the religious community because they all missed the point. And isn't it amazing how the church oftentimes we miss the point? The body of Christ, we miss the point. And 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 you know, I must confess, Doctor Bratton, these are difficult times in teaching people the word of God. And I'm so glad that we have students and I praise God for each and every one of you. I think God and welcome you uh, into a new course because you're teachable. You remain teachable. But there are so many people in the body of Christ, you can't teach them anything. They mm -hmm. know everything. Mm -hmm. And I've had a couple people, you give them a certificate, and uh, you, you may, may as well not even give them a certificate. They complete one course, and now they know more than their instructors. But I praise God for you all and love you all for it and love you for who you are and you remain humble and you're still teachable. And we've got people worldwide, they're connecting with us every day and, 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 and thanking us for our teachings and, and how we're helping them to change their nation, nations. Anna Cheptanu, Anna Esther in Mombasa, I thank you for your, your comments, your kind message you sent me today, how... Uh, our teachings are helping you and helping you get back on track, helping your faith, building you up in the faith. And, and he, you, said, you said to me uh, that I really don't know how I'm impacting the world, but I thank God. And maybe it's good that I don't know, Anna, but uh, I pray that God will continue using me. And then to all of our students, I thank God for you. Uh, Sandra Inman, I thank God for you. Hey, Mike, I thank you for sending Sandra to school. Uh, uh, Karen, I thank God for you. You're teachable. Ryan, I thank God for you. Ryan, praise God. By the way, Ryan's going to be teaching at the uh, online church on Sunday, uh, the 20th. So he's getting his message ready. And I thank God for your learning, your hunger for the word, and that you're teachable and you're receiving what you're teaching, and you're going with it, and you're building upon it. But most of all, it's not what I'm teaching you. It's the fact that you have a hunger and love for the Lord, and you continue to re remain humble before the Lord. That is the key. God said, what do, do I require of you, O oh man, but to do justly, love mercy, walk humbly before the Lord. Don't get puffed up. 
once you get your degree. Don't get puffed up that nobody can talk to you anymore. You're in your own little world. Uh, your, your kite is flying, soaring high above everyone else. No, 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 no. Be humble. Don't forget your humble beginnings. And I look back um, 50 years ago uh, today. 50 years ago today, I asked a young lady to be my bride. And uh, I was in the military. I was a Green Beret. They'd give me a two-week leave. And so uh, I, 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 I bought a brand-new pair of airborne jump boots, brand-new. And I had to go out on a field exercise. We went, we went out on an encampment for two weeks, a week and a half encampment. And I took that box with those new boots in them. And every moment I had free time, I spit shine those boots. I could see them. those boots shine so much. I could see my face in those boots. And I got married in those boots uh, with my military uniform and my new spit shine boots. And, uh, I remember that day and uh, 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 took my new bride to our new home. We had, had an, a new apartment in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Uh, I didn't even have, even have a car. We had to get a ride to go to Elkton, Maryland to get married. And then we came back to Coatesville. And I, we got on the bus and took a bus from Coatesville, Pennsylvania to Westchester, Pennsylvania. I'm just reminiscing, ladies and gentlemen. Larry and Lisa are doing the same thing tonight after 46 years. I'm reminiscing after 50 years, and I remember. Um, my point is this. I had nothing. I came into that marriage with a, a ring and a pair of spit shine uh, uh, military boots and a little bit of money in my pocket, uh, only a few dollars, leave money that, money that had accumulated, and I had it to uh, enough to hold me for um, uh, a couple of weeks and had paid a down payment on a new apartment, didn't have a car, but uh, put my bride on a bus, and we took a bus and traveled to the, the town where we're going to live, and we walked from the bus terminal to, to our new apartment and um, had a couple bags of groceries. Um, we had a bed. We had a, a kitchenette. And maybe a sofa. Humble beginnings. Humble beginnings, Lisa Johnson. Humble beginnings, Larry Johnson. And and uh, I look back and see, God has brought me from a mighty long way. A mighty long way. I've seen dreams uh, come true. I've seen uh, uh, hard times, difficult times. But Karen, uh, Nurse Karen Herzog up in Fleetwood, Pennsylvania, through it all. I've learned to put my trust in Jesus. I can't compare myself with Job. There is no way in the world I can compare myself with Job. But we've seen some hard times, been through many dangers, seen and unseen. But I know this, God is faithful. And I want to wind up on that note. God is faithful. Job was sitting out on the town dump. Dogs licking his wounds. His wife has just cursed him. Only, only friend he had in the world was a dog. And the dog was licking the pus on his wounds. His friends beat him up, up and down. But Job said, though he slay me. <laughs> Woo, I love this. Job said to his friends and to those who would listen, Though God slay me, yet will I trust him. Powerful words, ladies and gentlemen. When you're going through and you think nobody cares, and you think the world's caved in, and you think God has forgotten you, be like Job. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives and, 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 and he knew the situation he was in. He wanted to die. He, he couldn't take much more. But he says, even so, I know that my Redeemer lives, and I shall see him in the latter day. He will be standing on the earth. And he's saying, my God reigns. My God reigns. I'm in bad shape, Job is saying. 
But I know, I know, I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I'm going to wait till my change comes. He said, mm. I'm going to wait until my change comes. And so I, I beg you, my friends, no matter what you go through, in good times or bad times, tragedy or triumph, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord and declare to people, encourage them, no matter who they are, whether they're black, white, man, woman, boy, or girl, rich, poor, encourage them. Tell them, put your trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. I made a vow to the Lord. Yes, I did. I made a vow to the Lord. I promised him that I would go every step of the way. I made a vow to the Lord. Sometimes you want to turn back. Sometimes you want to quit. <laughs> but like, like Peter said to Jesus, when Jesus said, will you leave me also? John chapter 6, verse 66, will you leave me also? Simon Peter said, where can we go? Right. Nobody else has the word of salvation. Where can we go? I can't turn back. Lisa Johnson, you can't turn back. Larry Johnson, you can't turn back. Minister Loretta, you can't turn back. Jackie Carter, you can't turn back. I can't turn back. Let's keep on pressing on. And, and through it all, through it all, let's learn to trust in Jesus. Because as a man wrote some years ago, you don't know if what you're going through is a result of a divine counsel between Satan and God. But God is faithful. Father God, we thank you for this teaching tonight. Thank you for this class. Thank you for blessing us to venture out into a brand new course, Old Testament books of poetry. And as we study the books of Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, we ask that you guide us, give us wisdom, fill us with your Holy Spirit, lead us. Let your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Then, Father, forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us of all iniquity. Forgive our nation and the nations. Bring healing to the nations. And we thank you, Father, and love you and honor you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. We're going to stop our recording. <laughs>